Hi guys, it's Nick here with Nick's Whip Shop, and I'm very happy to say that this video is my tutorial, full length tutorial from start to finish on how to make a paracord bullwhip, nylon bullwhip. Um, I'm sorry I've been putting it off for so long, I've been very busy with different things. I've gotten a lot of requests over the past few months though on actually making this video. There's a lot of people that want to get into whip making, so I'm actually doing it now, and I apologize for the wait. Uh, this whip is going to be a six foot nylon bull whip. Um, it's not going to be the fanciest whip. Um, it's not going to have you know extremely fancy plating by any means. We don't want to jump into that. This is your first time making a whip. We don't want to make it overly unnecessarily difficult for you. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a fairly easy whip to make. Now I, I have to stress a few things. Uh, when you're making your first whip, take your time. If you rush it, it's gonna it's, not, it's gonna turn out sloppy. I know I made mine sloppy the first time I made my first whip. So just take your time. If you get tired, take a break. You know, step away from it. Go outside or whatever. Um, if you keep hammering at it, you know, pounding it, making the whip, you're gonna get sick of it. Uh, you're gonna get sick of it, and you're gonna rush. It's gonna be sloppy. So take your time. Um, another thing I wanna I wanna let you guys know is uh, there are many ways to make to make a bull whip. There are many methods. I'm not by any means saying that my method is the only way to do it in the right way. Um, it's worked very well for me in the past. Um, there are many other people that have slightly different methods than mine. Um, but whatever works for you. This video is a suggestion. Uh, this method has worked for me very well in the past. Um, I've made, you know, I've, I've made over a hundred whips using this method and they've turned out quite well. And, uh, Without uh, you know saying anything else, let's get right into it. Um, this is going to be a complete guide for you guys, and uh, welcome to the world of whip making. Alrighty, the materials you'll need to make this whip are 550 paracord. I prefer getting 300 feet or more for this specific whip. You also need some larger quarter-inch diameter cord. Uh, make sure it is it does have a core to it that can be easily pulled out. You'll need quarter-inch steel rod. This is a uh, little over a 10 inch piece of steel rod here. Electrical tape. You need a lighter. A file or a sanding wheel if you have access to one. Tape measure and BBs. Let's get right to it. The first step is to cut your quarter inch steel rod to the proper length. Yes, it's a 10 and a half inches. Perfect. This is going to be a six foot whip, so what you're going to want to do is measure out, you want about five and a half feet of your cord. So we're going to measure that out now. You take your knife and cut that right at five and a half feet. Next, you're going to pull the entire core out of your cord. Make sure it's all out. And then you should be left with a hollow uh, piece of cord, a gutted piece of cord. Next we're going to take our handle piece, which is our quarter inch steel, and we're just going to file it down. And the reason we're doing this is right where, where you cut it there, oftentimes it'll be very jagged, and you don't want it to tear through your nylon. So we're just going to sand this down a bit. At this point, if you have a sanding wheel, much quicker. If you don't, I do. I'm just doing this to show you that this works as well. And just sand it down and make it smooth. So here's what it'll look like after the sanding. Nice and smooth and it's not going to cut or tear our cord. Next we're going to take the sanded down end of our handle and take one end of our gutted cord. We're just going to slip it right in there. Just We're going to feed the steel right into our cord. Okay. We want to feed it in about two inches. We're going to take our electrical tape. We're just going to secure that. We'll be securing it much. We'll be getting it a lot tighter later. This is just to hold it for now. So what we're doing is we're wrapping around there, just connecting. Nice and tight. It doesn't have to be real tight, just to, something to secure it for now. Make sure it's nice and flat, no bumps. And there we go. All right. Now we're going to measure the entire the entire length. <clears throat> what you see now, this is going to be the length of our whip, the total length. 
and a whip is measured by the tip of the handle all the way down to the tip of the thong, which is the braided portion of the whip. So we're going to measure this exactly to or a inch more than six feet because at the end this tip will become cut off. So we're going to do six feet one inch. And it just so happens that we measured things right. This whole thing happens to be six foot one inch. All right, the next step is to take the nylon part, the nylon part of the cord. Don't include the handle of this. We're going to take this, fold it in half, and we're going to find the middle. And just take a marker, just something. You can even use a piece of tape if you want to. And just mark the middle, just so you know where it is. And make sure you mark it very lightly because there's going to be BBs flowing through this part and you don't want it to be constricting them so they can't flow through. All right? Moving on. Take your BBs. Also take the very end. Sorry. We're going to open this up. And you can do that with a pencil. You can do that with the other end. You can do that with your finger if you want to. We're just going to open this up. And we're going to start feeding the BBs in. So I'm going to try to make a nice little tear here so it's like a perfect. And very slowly we're going to pour the BBs in. And each time we pour a few of them, we have to we have to work them in. We have to and you can feel them going in. And expect to spill quite a bit of them. What you're doing, let me back up for you. You're filling this up, and when you're done, what you want is you want from the tape down to the handle, you want it solid with BBs in a nice line, perfect with BBs. This will give your whip some weight, and it's known as shot loading a whip to give it more momentum and more mass as you're cracking it for easier cracking. Um, so go ahead and fill it up. I'll show you some more techniques for doing this. It is, It can be kind of tricky. Whatever way works best for you. Even if it takes filling it one by one, whatever works. As you can see though, I can kind of they're going in fairly easily. Every once in a while I'm just gonna give it some slack. You can hear them rolling down the entire length. So filled up. Okay, so as you can see, we have filled up our cord here, all the way up with BBs, all the way to the tape. As you can see, I've also tied a knot here just to make sure that they would stay in there for the time being. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just run my fingers all the way up to the handle. Make sure there's no spaces in there. We want the BBs to be end on end. All right. So at this point, we can go ahead and take off the tape. And here is where the BBs stop. Might be a good idea to tie a knot there while you're that way while you're working on getting other. Uh, if you're working on reaching for other tools or whatnot, they're not going to spill out on you. All right. I'm going to cut off a section of paracord. I've already done that. It's about a two foot section and I'm going to completely gut the paracord, take out the inside strands. That's why they call it seven strand because there are seven smaller nylon strands within the cord. And I'm just going to take one and what we're, what we're doing here is we're, we are binding the end here. I'm going to zoom in a bit for you guys. And what we're doing is we're, we're binding the area where the BBs um, no longer uh, continue down and we're just stopping the BBs off because there's going to be a lot of force put on that section when you're uh, when you're cracking your whip. So as you can see I've just made a made a knot here. I'm gonna take the paracord. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as it's nice and bound nice and tight. 
So whatever way works best for you, you're just making it so that the BBs will not find their way further down. Of course, you're not going to leave this knot here either. I'm going to take that knot out and bind it right there. All right. So you guys could get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm basically just squeezing the cord here, pinching it so the BBs can't make their way towards the end of the whip. So they'll stay put, all right? So I've just kind of wrapped it around, give it multiple knots, very tight um, to hold it in place, hold the BBs in place. Because you're going to be cracking your whip hundreds of thousands, or excuse me, hundreds of times, adding to thousands of times, who knows, maybe hundreds of thousands if you're using the whip that much. And keep in mind, every time you crack the whip, it's going to be a lot of pressure from these BBs against this part. So you want to make sure it's nice and tight. All right? And just to reinforce things up a little bit, we're going to take some electrical tape and just give a nice few wraps around our binding here. Okay? Just to ensure, you know, there's, when you're making a whip, the last thing you want is the very most interior part of your whip to come apart. It's at the very center. It's underneath everything. So to fix that, you have to undo the entire whip. You don't want that to happen. Get it right the first time, it'll save you a lot of time. All right? So that's what it'll end up looking like. And of course, we'll take a blade and we'll snip off, or trim the excess uh, nylon, like that, just to make it neat. And we are ready for our next step. Okay, so at this point, this is what we should have. We should have an overall length of six feet. We have our handle. We have our BBs uh, in a linear arrangement, end on end, all the way down to our binded part. All right, and then this, the last bit of this is hollow. There's nothing in here. All right, so that's what we should be at at this point. You have your core of your wheel. The next stage. It would be very convenient if you have access to a vise or a clamp of some sort, and we'll get to that right now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slip the handle of our whip into a clamp like this, and we're going to start at the top of the handle. We're going to start up here at the top and work our way down, binding the entire length of the whip except for the last foot. We're going to be binding with electrical tape just to tighten up the core, make it nice and rigid. All right, so we're going to do that, and I'll show you the technique for that. Don't worry about getting it too tight on the handle. I will move my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Actually, so I'm just I'm just binding just like this, you know. And you're going to go all the way down until you reach one foot left on the hollow nylon part. So what we've done is we have wrapped one layer of electrical tape down the entire core and stopped at one foot. At this point, it's a fantastic idea to singe the end of your, uh, your cord here. I'm gonna reach over from my lighter. I'm actually using a small pro uh, butane torch, whatever works, just so you have a flame. I'm just going to singe that end, just so it doesn't fray. Alright. Stuff gets pretty hot, so you got to... Good. Singe the end, so it won't kind of come undone. You're going to want to take it, you want to put it back into your vise, just to reinforce the transition point between the handle and the core. Alright. And I'll show you with that, that what we're doing here. As you notice here, it's very floppy, the transition between the, uh, the core itself and the handle. You're going to want to hold this straight, make sure it's nice and level. And you're just going to give it a few very firm wraps, okay? Just like that. And start. you can start here and work your way up. But the point is just to get the transition uh, much more firm than it already is. Make sure it's 
it's even. Just giving it some nice wraps like that. All right, and that's all. And this is what the finished product of the core looks like. And this is the, the core finished product. So uh, part one of this video is complete. I should say part one of this whip is complete. And we will now move on to the first layer, the first belly of the whip. All right, time to get out your spool of paracord and we're going to cut off two 10 length sections of parachute cord. Okay, so here's my two 10 foot sections and I'm going to gut them both. And that means I'm just going to pull the inside strands out of them. Now eventually, uh, while we're making this, this whip, we're gonna be, you know, working with sometimes, uh, you know, 20 foot lengths. And those take a while to pull the guts out of. Those take a while, you have to actually tie them to something and just work your way out. You know, we'll get into that later if we need to. See that? There's, you'll get better at it as you just, as the more you do it, the quicker you are at it, so. Feel it already freeing up. Finally, you can just pull it out. All right. That's it. So we have our two hollow sections. All right. Next step. All right. This point, if you have a vise at hand, like this one or a clamp of some sort, that would be fantastic for you. It'll save you a lot of hassle. All right. You're gonna have your two 10-foot strands at hand. And you're going to find the middle of one of them. Alright. So now we're going to go just like this. This is the middle right here. We're going to loop it around like that. And we're going to take the right one and cross it over the left and pull the left to the other side. All right. Keep in mind that we still have the middle marked. I'm just going to slide this up to the top. And now we're going to take this side and slide it up and just form a little loop on the left side. That's when we're going to take our other 10 foot strand and slide it through here. See that? Just like that, sliding it through. And once again, we're going to find the middle of that. So just pull. Now we can snug that down, by the way. And just find the middle of your other 10 foot strand. All right, so we're there. And this is what it should look like. Zoom in a bit. If you can see here, our first one, we have it looped around just like that. And then here is our other 10 foot strand, it's just kind of just like that. And now we can begin our first belly or layer of our whip. And this is where we start plating. And I'll show you what plating is. First of all, this is a four plat, and it means we have two strands on each side. That's all you need to know for now. If we look at the bottom strand on the top, which is right here, we notice that it's pointing to the upper right, the top right strand, okay? I'm going to take this strand, make sure we're nice, where we've slid this all the way up to the top, and we're going to pull this around the back to the other side like that, we're going to go under one and over one like this and just lay it right over the top like that. And pull that through. All right. Now we look at our bottom strand that's on the top pointing to the top left. Okay. I'm going to take this around the back, under one, over one. And that's all there is to it for a four plat whip. Or a four, sorry, a four plat belly. You're going to continue that pattern all the way down until you run out. And that's what it is. Over one, under one. So I'll do a little bit so you can kind of get the idea. Always look at this bottom surface strand. The strand on the, the furthest down that's on the top, pointing to the upper right. See that? Under one, over one. One over one. 
just keep on going. Under one over one. Under one over one. Just keep on going. So that's it. And go ahead and do that until you've run out. Okay, so if you look here, this is where we started. And we've worked our way down. All the way down until we have run out of strands here. And that is exactly what's supposed to happen. I'm going to take your electrical tape. You could go a little further than this, but I prefer to stop there. That way I can get a nice tight pull on everything before I bind it. I'm just going to take a strip of electrical tape, a couple inches long, tear it. <clears throat> and you're just going to temporarily hold this here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Wrap it around just so this doesn't undo itself, okay? Just like that. Perfect. Next, you're going to grab one of your blades. I'm just going to grab my razor blade here. And you're going to kind of place them in order. You're going to take your longest one and see your second longest one, strand that is. So for example, here's my longest, here's my second longest. And I'm just going to kind of put them in a a gradual decreasing order here. Length, that is. So that way we get a nice smoother taper, okay? So this is what I've done. I've taken my my longest one, second longest, third longest, and fourth longest. Now we're just going to kind of spread these in a certain way where they're just laying down nicely because we don't want any bumps, see that? Kind of just, if they're crossed like that, pull them over. Just so you get everything nice and seated. That's what you want. Take your electrical tape. And bind it all together. Just like this. Make sure that there's no bumps. Find it just like that. And the next step is to bind. Uh, to uh, put an entire layer of electrical tape over this belly here. Starting from there, ending where we just ended. Let's do that. So I'm starting with the top of the handle and giving it a nice, tight coating here, all the way around. Move it down. We're still in the frame. And this this should be very tight. We want it constricted. We're still on the metal of the handle. But once we get to the transition point, to where there's no more steel rod, we want to do something a little different. I'll show you what that is. So this is our transition point as you can see right here. I'm going to really take it and really put a lot of pressure on it. And go back up to really strengthen that transition point. You want that to be as stiff as you can get it without having it too bulky. I'm just going to go over that a bit and then continue all the way down.
to the part where we run out of strands. So this is the part that we've reached. This is where we were binding the end. We're gonna go ahead and go right over that. Every, after every belly, every layer of plating, like we just did, next will be six strands, or eight, excuse me, um, I, I go over this transition point, and the, the idea is that every layer has a certain, has a, it's thicker here to give it, give it a better, uh, give it more life and more spring to it. All right. Now at this point, we're done with the first layer, or first belly of your whip. And you can kind of start to feel, if you swing it around a little bit, it's starting to feel like a whip. It's well balanced. You can feel that momentum. You can feel that the mass from the shot loaded core. And you can feel like it's really starting to feel like something that you can crack easily. And the more bellies that you put on the whip, of course, the easier it's going to feel and the more leverage you're going to get. So let's move on to the next step. After we complete each belly, what we'll be, we'll be doing is taking the cinder block and rolling out the entire length of the whip. This will give us a nice, smooth, proportional, round uh, shape to the entire whip itself. This, is not, this is an optional step if you absolutely don't have anything, even a piece of wood will work. But a nice heavy stone such as this or marble is best can't find anything, you can skip this if you want. Your whip's going to look a lot better though if you do it. Starting with the handle, holding it at an angle, it doesn't matter how you do it, just make sure you get it even. We're flattening all those spaces and gaps out, putting out all those air bubbles. completed the second step of our roll whip. Moving on to part three. Our next belly will have eight strands, four on each side. That calls for two 14 foot sections, one 10 foot section, and one five foot section of gutted paracord. Once the strands have been cut, we're going to gut them. I'm going to start with my five footer because it's the easiest and quickest. The 14 footers are going to be a little more time consuming, just a little bit, not much. Got our 5 footer. We're going to move over here with the camera and I'm going to tie, I'm going to expose the ends, pull, like start to gut them like this, pull the 7 strands out. And I'm just going to simply tie them to a door like this, a door handle. Something that will give me some tension on the line. I'm just going to pull them like this. Of course, it doesn't look like it's very efficient because I'm trying to stay in the shot and I'm going around the corner. And there we go, all the strands are out. And just repeat that for the uh, last couple of strands. Now that we've successfully gutted all this paracord, we're going to start off with our two 14 foot sections. This is the first 14 foot strand. I'm going to simply double it in half. And instead of just holding your place like we did some of the shorter ones, we're going to tie a knot in the middle to hold our place. That way we'll easily know where the middle is. So that's the first one. I'm going to do that for the other 14 foot strand. We will not be undoing these knots, so snug them down all the way. Alright, those are the two 14 footers. It's going to be a bit different for our other strands. Here's our five footer. We're not going to find the middle on the five footer. What we're going to do is 
pull the two ends together like this and instead of you know even we're gonna have about four inches difference that's so when we go to drop the strand it's it's not two strands dropping at the same length so this is what we're going to do have about four inches separate slide your fingers down and tie the knot so you're not really finding the center of these you're just finding the right spot tie these down none of these knots will be undone and then same goes for our I believe this is our yeah this is our 10 footer four inches and tie a knot so one length is four inches longer than the other all right we're ready to start plating okay so as you can see the whip is back into the clamp and we're getting ready to start braiding or plating the second layer which is eight plat starting with four strands on each side these are our two 14 foot strands right here these are the middles of them and we're basically doing the same thing that we did with our single strands okay so around the back like this I need to tighten my vise there we are the knots on the back the two come around and overlap the left side which comes now to the right side All right just like that knots are always behind that way you know where the middle is and try to slide these guys up as high as you can without you know starting to fall off so I like to, about a half inch between the top and the other strands okay same thing taking our right giving some slack forming a loop for our 10 footer and our 5 footer so this is our 10 footer right here I'm going to take a, one of the ends and feed it into the loop feeding it through into this loop and it just lays across like that. Taking our five footer now, doing the same exact thing, feeding it through this loop. And once you've fed it into the loop, you can tighten the loop by pulling once again on those strands that you've just loosened. And now all we do is we pull our 10 footer, sorry this is our five footer, and when the knot stops, that's how you know that you've reached the, the middle, or the part that needs to be the middle. It's not technically the middle because, as you already know, there's four inches difference on each side, okay? So that's what, you, that's what we want right there. It's the same thing as a four plat, but just more strands, really. Tightening it, anyway. Alright? So, now we begin plating eight strands. We look at our bottom strand that's on the surface. It's right here, pointing to the upper right. Take this guy, pull it around. Now, instead of over one, under one, we're going over, uh, sorry, under two, over two, instead of under one, over one. All right, pull that nice and tight. Now, we look at our bottom strand again, right here. This time, it's pointing to the upper left. Top strand, under two, over two. And all you're doing is you're repeating this all the way down until you've, you're starting to run out of strand. And eventually you will. You will run out of your 5 foot strand and then eventually your 10 foot strand. And then eventually you run out of your two 14 footers. All right. Now in between there's different ways of tightening. Uh, what I like to do is I like to count. I like to go 1, 1, and go all the way to four because there's four on each side and then I'll take each one individually and tighten. Well, people have their own ways of doing that. Just focus on having everything nice and tight and even and continue that pattern. Under two, over two. Right side, top strand, under two, over two. Pull, tighten. See that how it's coming? It's starting to look like a whip. Bottom strand pointing the upper left, around the back under two, over two, pull. Now the right side, we're just alternating, right to left, right to left, that's all it is. So keep going until you run out of a strand, until you have about this much left, and then we'll pick up there. 
So we have plated down these. We're working on our second, the second belly of the whip here. And if you notice, we are running out of one of our strands here. We're running out of the um, one side of the five foot strand. So what you're going to do is you're going to get it on the bottom here. Plate till it's on the bottom. Could be left or right, whichever side that is the shorter, shorter part. And the bottom strand points to the upper right. You're going to take that go around just like that pull nice and tight and we're going to take that strand the shorter strand that we're running out of we're going to pull it under and have it parallel with our core of the whip and now we're just going to kind of ignore it pretend it's not even there bottom strand points to the upper left now we're going to go on the, this side under two over one right and this part could be a bit confusing for you. I know it was confusing for me when I started making bull whips, and whips in general. So now we no longer are worried about that strand, okay? So bottom strand points to the upper right. We're still doing under two over two on the left side because we still have four strands. But on the right side, we're doing under two over one because we have three. So bottom strand on the surface points to the upper left. We're still doing under two over one. Now pretty soon we're gonna snip this off because we don't want that bulkiness and the, the bulge. Under two over one on the left. Like that. See that? The strand is even with the core. All right. Under two over one on the right side still. Make sure everything's nice and tight as we're going along. Now we're going to take our blade here. We're going to snip this. Just so it doesn't continue on for too long. Alright, and we're continuing this pattern of under two over two on the left, but on the right we're still doing under two over one, just like that. And you're going to continue to do that under two over two on the left, under two over one on the right, until we run out of the other side of our five foot strand. So keep on plating until you run you start to run out and we'll pick up there. So we have continued plating, making our way down. Still going under two on the left, but on the right, we're still doing under two over one. So sorry about that depth of field going on. I got my aperture way too wide open on this camera. Sorry about that. It's distracting, I know. So, we got, um, here's the strand. This is the, uh, the, sh the strand we're running out of. Alright. Still going under 2 over 2 on the left. And under 2 over 1 on the right. But everything's about to be evened out because we are running out our shortest strand that we're about to run out is on the top left, so we're going to plait it under two over one. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself. Excuse me. The bottom strand is pointing the upper right. Here is what we want. Under two over two. Now we're ready. Bottom strand pointing the... Whenever you're confused on which strand to go, you always use that. Bottom strand on the top points to the upper left. You know, the pointing, whatever diagonal direction is pointing it. So now we're going to go under two over one. The uh, strand on the top points to the upper right. Now we're going to go under two over one, just like we were doing on the right side for a long time. Okay. And this strand, ignore it. Pretend it's not even there. Make sure, you know, give it one last nice tug. Line it up and just plate. Yeah. Now we're doing under two over one on each side evenly.
It's always nice to get back into an even pattern. Top strand on the bottom, point step right. Under two over one. Pull. Under two over one. And that's all there is to it. Nice thing about YouTube is you can rewind, pause, you can rewind as many times as you like. If it just so happens um, that if anybody's out there watching this right now, it's like, Nick, I, I have no idea this, this whole plating thing. I have no idea what you're doing. The dropping strands, I don't have a clue what's going on. Send me a message, and I will be happy to make a very in-depth, very slow-paced, detailed video of what the heck I'm doing here. I'm trying to go slow for you guys. I I understand that uh, I was where you are. I mean, I'm not the quickest learner uh, when it comes to things like this. Um, so I'm just I'm just trying to say if you need extra help, give me a message. I'll, I'll make another little separate video on how to how to drop strands or whatever you're having trouble with. All right. I'm gonna take my blade. I'm just going to cut this because we don't need to continue with that. All right, sorry about that. All right. And now we have an even under two over one on each side. And keep on going until you run out of another strand. Okay, so we've made it this far. And we're now running out of another strand once again. And it points to the top left. And we're going to pretend that's not even there. So now we're going to go under one over one. Only on the right side for a while. Just the same thing we did before. We're taking this. Pretending it's not even there anymore. Holding it right parallel with the core of the whip. Continuing under two over one on the left side because we still have three over there. But on our right side we're going under one over one. I'm going to keep this up for a little bit. Continuing under one over one on the right side. And once it's tight, once it's held in place, you can go ahead and snip off that excess. As long as it's even with the core, which it is. I'm going to grab it. Here's that part that we have. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to slice it right off. Just like that. I'm going to keep on plating. Under two, over one on the left. Under one, over one on the right. And you're going to keep on going until you run out of your other strand, which will be very soon now. Sorry about the camera. Okay, still going good. Just about ready to drop that strand. And that should be enough right there, all right? So now we're gonna take the top left, under one, over one, and just about ready. Once we get that strand on the top, that's what we're going for. Always pay attention to the strand. It'll always tell you where to go. Now, I just got ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Now it's pointing to it. Plate it just like a normal strand. Under one over one on the right. Pull it nice and tight. Now we're going to ignore it. Pretend it's part of the whip. Hold it against it. Nice and tight. Pointing up here. Under one over one. All right, just like that. Now it's part of the whip. See how it's nice and even with that. And now we are at an even over one under one on both sides. Okay. And now we're just gonna go all the way until we run out 
of all four of them at the same time, okay? I think that's short enough. We're just going to go ahead and continue right on over that. No need to snip that off. And continue all the way down until you run out. Alright, so I've run out of my strands and I've cut them to staggered lengths, just as we did in the beginning. And we're just going to make sure everything's even. I'm going to wrap this. And we'll be able to move on to the next step, which is giving it another layer of tape over the over this belly. And the second belly, an 8 plat. The final belly, the last layer, is going to be 12. Six strands on each side. Alright. So it's time to coat the whole thing here. Okay. So now we're going to give this... We're doing the same thing between each layer. I'm not going to show the video of doing this one. Um, I'll show, I'll just get it started here. And you're just going to do it once again. You're going to just give it a nice, tight layer. And give this part, uh, give the transition once again. Every time you go over a new belly, give this more uh, constricted, more, give it more uh, constriction there. So go ahead and do that. All right. So once again, we meet with the old slab to do a nice roll of this second belly here. So I'm doing the same thing I did last time. Sorry with the don't want to roll over that. Um, starting to handle smooth it all out. Transition. So the second belly is now complete. We are ready for the overlay, which is 12 plat, six strands on each side, and that will be the last layer of this whip. Let's get right to it. Okay, for the last um, layer, which is the overlay, will be in 12 plat. We're going to need two 20 foot strands, one 19 foot strand, one 14 footer, one 8 footer, and one 5 footer. So cut those to length and gut them and we will get started. Alrighty, we've taken our two 20 foot length strands and we have halved them in perfect halves, but all the rest we did that four inch difference on each side for purposes of uh, dropping strands efficiently. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our, we have our strands right here. Move the camera in a bit so I can reach. All right. <clears throat> We're going to take our three longest strands. We're going to find the middles here and place all these behind here. And the same thing we've been doing, just like that. <clears throat> Make sure the knots stay behind. And again, we're going to give it some slack, just like that. In no specific order, we're going to take our the remaining strands feed the first one through, take our next one, feed that one through, don't worry about pulling it all the way to the knot yet, and then our last one here, <clears throat> and this one will be fed through. Now that they're all through, we can go ahead and pull this tight, and now we can pull them all the way and find the middles here by the knots. There's the first middle. And... There's our second middle, the second knot. And then here comes the last one. Oh, that was quick. All right. So there we go. <clears throat> I want to have these as high as we can get them, once again, without slipping off. And for the handle, we're going to do something different. This is the overlay. This is the last layer of your whip. Now, not a lot is changing. Uh, there is a slight difference in the pattern. We're doing a diamond plait. 
bit more time consuming. Just take your time. If you need uh, to re look at it again, just rewind it. Take your time though, all right? The bottom strand is on the top is pointing the upper right. We're gonna, instead of taking one, we're gonna grab two strands like this. Take them around the back of the other side. And this time we're going to go over two, under two, and over two. Just like that. Make sure it's pulled nice and tight. And now we're going to hit the other side, all right? Top strand on the bottom, pointing to the upper left. Take two strands, bring them around the back. And once again, going over two, under two, like that, and over two there. Pull that nice and tight. like that. I'm going to keep going on this pattern for the whole length of the handle. Pointing the upper right, grabbing two strands, pulling them around the back. I pull these from the other side around the back and we're going over, under, and over. And pulling tight every time. Now make sure that all these layers are, or all these strands are not twisted or knotted or anything like that. Make sure they're evenly spaced. Yeah, I'm not even showing anything, sorry about that. Make sure that all your strands are even. You don't want stuff like this to be going on where they're over each other. Make sure they're just lined up end to end on the sides. So continuing with this pattern, if we take a look at the we're going to start with the right side, pointing at the upper right. Around the back. Two strands together, over two, under two, over two. Now if you leave it just like that, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look all bunched up back there. So you wanna make sure that you pull these strands and Make sure that they are nice and flat, okay? Going with this. Change the upper right, upper left, sorry. Over, under, over. And you're gonna do this pattern the whole length of the handle. The entire length, and then the transition We'll go into our standard pattern that we use for all the rest of the layers, the bellies. So keep on plating all the way down to the transition point, which is right here. Just before that you transition, about three inches before you transition, we'll stop there. Okay, so we have plated the entire length of our handle and this diamond plat here. And we are ready to transition to what's called the herringbone. The herringbone is the, uh, the pattern that we've been doing for all the other bellies. And we're just gonna transition from this straight into it. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult. We're just gonna do it the way that, just the normal way of doing it. You know, nothing special about it. Just uh, watch closely here, all right? The bottom strand, on the surface is pointing to our upper left so we're going to take one strand the furthest one to the top on the top left we're going to take that strand pull it around I'm going to go under three over three nice even pattern <clears throat> points to the upper right around the back under three over three pull nice and tight and that right there is the pattern until you run out of a strand, that's the pattern, under three, over three on each side. So go ahead and keep on plating until you run out. And we will pick up there. Alrighty, I wanna show you guys how this thing is starting to take its shape. It's starting to actually look like a bullwhip now. Uh, it's starting to look like a finished bullwhip. See our diamond plat in the handle, and then we go into our herringbone. 
which we can see that. that's how it's going. All right, it's time to drop a strand. We have run out of length. Here's a strand. We're just doing the same exact thing we've been doing, guys. Nothing different. Just more strands to work with, that's all. The short strand on the bottom is pointing to the upper right. I'm going to take it around the back. Now we're going to have under three, over two. And pretend that that one is not even there. Give it a nice tight pull. And here it is. It's going to go parallel with the core or the, the whip itself. Next, top left, around the back. And we still have six strands, so we're gonna go under three over three. Still pretending this one isn't even there. We're gonna tuck it right underneath. On the left, we're still doing, or now we are now doing, I meant to say, under, two, under three over two. Pull nice and tight. And keep on going. Same thing, just more strands. And now we are ready to drop the other strand. That way we'll have five strands on each side. So let's go ahead and do it, even it out. Taking the right side, pulling around the back. Once we're still at under three over two here, it'll soon be the same on this side now. Pulling that nice and tight. Points to the upper left. Now we're going under three over two. Now it's even on both sides. This side. And now we're just going to go ahead and pull this. Pretend it's not even there. Just as if it's even with the whip parallel. And now we have an equal five strands on each side. So it's even. Under three over two. On the right side. And the left side, under three over two. So continuing on until we run out of more strands. Time to drop another strand. As of now we have five on each side, but we're about to have four on one and five on the other. Pull it nice and tight. The strand will now be ignored. Under three over two. Pull tight. Now on this side we'll go under two over two. That's how that'll look. So play on. So we've just dropped the other strand. Now we have an even four on each side. Now we're going under two over two on each side. Nice and even. Continue. Okay, so we are continuing to plate down our whip. And at this point we have eight strands on each side. Sorry, four strands on each side. And we're continuing to go until we run out of another strand. Alrighty, still have four strands on each side and we are getting ready to drop the strand here that's on the left, bottom left. So we're just gonna keep plating over it for a couple passes under two, over two. There we go. And at this point, we're gonna do what we've been doing all along, pulling that one strand along the belly Pulling it tight, plating over. Now there's three, you're gonna go under two over one. And still on the other side, we're still going under two over two, pulling those tight. Keep going a couple more times. Under two over one on the left, under two over two still on the right. Now we're ready to trim this one. That's discontinued, that we've dropped. And continue plating. And <clears throat> continue until we run out of this guy. Alrighty, we've dropped our other strand and now we are left with a six plat, three on each side. So continue down and we will drop on yet another strand. We're gonna be dropping two more strands before we end. We're getting pretty close now to the final, uh, to, the, to the end of our whip here. So we're getting there. 
We're moving right along. Alrighty, we're doing great here. And we are now dropping the first of our last two strands that are going to be dropped. Okay, here it is, the first one right here. This is pretty darn short. So we're gonna go around the back after we clear the other side. Good, now it's this guy's turn. We let it get nice and short, so I'm going to pull it real tight. That's where it is. Pointing the upper right. It's like we've been doing, and now we're at our end. Under one. Let me get that out of the way, sorry. We're still going under two over one. Pulling it nice and tight. On the other side, under two over one. Pulling that shortest strand underneath, parallel with the core, and now we're continuing under one, over one on the left side, and on the right side, we're still going under two, over one, okay? And we're getting ready to drop the last strand here. It's just almost short enough. Under one, over one, good. And here we go. Under two over one. Under one over one on the left. And here we go. Sliding this parallel with the core, just like that. And here it is. Under one over one on the right. Under one over one on the left. And that is the pattern that we are going to finish out this whip with. So guys, this is the, the home stretch here. Last lap. You're almost done with the plating. So if you've came this, if you've come this far, great job. If you're just watching this video, it's not that bad, guys. You you can do this. It just takes time. All right, continue on until we reach the end. All righty. Well, we have reached the end of our whip here. This is the four plat finish here. We have about an inch and a half left. At this point, you're going to want to stop because it's time to make the very important part of the whip called the fall that contains the cracker, the part that breaks the speed of sound and gives the whip its crack. So it's time to make the fall. There are two ways to do it. Let's get right with it here. All right, we're going to make the fall of our whip. First of all, we're gonna start with getting four feet of paired cord. And we're gonna cut it four feet. There are two ways to make a fall. This is the first way and the more efficient way. You're gonna gut your four foot strand of uh, paracord. Now we're gonna take one edge, uh, just one part of this, and we're gonna make a small angular cut. Just like that, okay? At this point, you'll need a lighter or a torch, some sort of flame. And we're gonna singe the top of this. And this just gives it a nice point. We're trying to get a point on here. Now you're going to take, this is called a permalock needle or a lacing needle. You can get these for four dollars on Amazon. Here, I'll throw you a link right there. Hopefully the link works. And we're just going to thread this parachute cord inside the needle, just like this, okay? Not too much, just so it's nice and secure. Now we're going to take the paracord and put it in half. Take the other hand, find the halfway point, mark it with your finger, hold it right there. Now we're going to take this needle and we're going to thread the cord inside of itself. And the direction I'm threading it, the tip of the, 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 tip of the needle is pointing towards the end of the fall, opposite the loop. Alright? Now different paracords have different tensions and different thicknesses sometimes. So you may find it very difficult to thread, or you might find it a breeze. What I'm doing is I'm just working this needle through inside of the cord. And I'm just threading itself. So I'm working my way down towards the end. Got about another five inches or so. Through. I'm going to 
take it, pull it through, and just a little bit past. There you go. You're gonna hold this and pull, pinch and pull. So that way you have an eye at the other end. You want to pull just enough through so that the eye is closing like that. Make sure everything's even. You're gonna take your knife and you're going to cut here. Not here, here. Fire up your lighter or flame or torch or whatever means of a flame you have. And you're going to singe the end. And what that'll do is it'll hold the two paracord sections together. It kind of welds them together so they won't be sliding around. Alright? Now that's the first way to make your fall. Now I'll now show you the second way. Assuming that you don't have a permalock needle and you don't want to order one up, you want to finish this whip right now because you're almost done. So what you're going to do, you're going to measure out a total of, I'm going to do 22 inches, cut it at 22 inches. Do not gut the paracord for the second method. What you're going to do is fire up your torch or lighter and you're going to singe one end. Do not gut it. Let that cool. And we're doing the same thing to the other end. If it's like this, just trim those white ends off so it's flush with the rest of the cord. Same thing with the other end, you're going to singe that and weld it all together so it's not sliding around in there. Take the other cool end, preferably, and just tie a knot like this, and then tie another knot. So double knot that, pull like that, and this is a secondary option for making a fall. This is what it will look like. So that's another option for making a fall. It's time to attach the fall. Whatever way you've chosen, it doesn't matter. Let's attach it. Alrighty, it's time to attach the fall that we just made. We're going to take one end of it. We're going to open up this eye by pulling the inner strand out. We can always tight, we're going to be tightening it up when we're done. Just enough to slip over the entire end of our whip, like this. Now once it's attached, or I mean once it's around the whip, you're going to just tighten that eye right back up. Just like that. So our eye is secured around the whip. You want two strands on each side. And we're almost done. We're going to grab the fall, make sure that it's touching the bottom of our whip, hold it with your finger. We're going to take the first one, we're going to go around the back of the whip. The fall is also being, the fall is also in here, coming around the fall like this. And then you're going to open that up, tuck it in like this, and pull around the back. Next we're going to take our second strand, same thing, around the back and the fall, through that loop, and pull. The next strand, around the back and the fall, through the loop, and pull it fairly tight for now. And then finally, our last strand, around the back, through the loop and pull. At this point, you'll notice that your fall is way up here, so you want to pull, start to pull that down, just kind of inch it down. And you might want a pair of pliers for this next step. Now this is called your fall hitch. This is a four point fall hitch because we have four strands that make up the, the connection that holds our fall. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each individual strand and you want to make sure that all these strands are super tight. 
because this is the part that holds your fall together. You don't want it to be loose. For aerodynamic reasons as well as the construction of your whip so it doesn't fall apart. It's the last thing you want. Finish a whip and it falls apart. So I'm just tightening each individual strand just like this. There we go. Now you're going to take your razor blade or your knife and make sure, this is very important, we're going to cut off the excess on these strands but you want to make sure that you do not cut your fall. So hold the fall off to the side and we're going to take all these strands and just cut them about an inch you're going to leave about an inch, just like that. Now this is your core strand. We're going to make that even shorter. About a quarter of an inch left. You'll see that the strands we have about maybe an inch left and then we have a quarter inch for the core strand. Now we're going to take our torch. Now we're going to take the core strand and just kind of singe it a bit. and just kind of press it into the hitch. There we are. And we're not quite done. We're going to also singe our strands that we trimmed. This is so they don't fray. All right, looking good. Alrighty, so our whip is just about complete. There it is. Now we're getting out the old block for the last time. And if you've skipped this step on any of any, any other uh, the the bellies before the overlay, I would highly suggest that you do not skip it for this last part because this is what gives the whip its beautiful round finish. Starting with the handle. Since this is the overlay, this is what everybody looks at, this is what you're going to be looking at. This is the part of the whip that you want to roll extra. You want to put a lot of pressure. I'm putting all my upper body weight against this thing. And we're just working our way down. Making sure all those strands are laid flat. Nice and pretty end to end. Alrighty, so we have our whip here. This is the end of the handle. I'm going to take some electrical tape and right where it starts to get skinny, right where it starts to get ugly, where the layers begin to overlap each other, I'm going to take some tape, electrical tape. I'm going to wrap around very, very tightly. I'm going to restart that. It was bad. Very tightly wrap around here, just like this really want to constrict it. Just like this. Really constricting it here. And now what we're going to do is take our kind of saw. We're going to actually Cut off right here. We're going to cut. This 
point you can take your razor, get in here like this. Trim away the excess. We're gonna take our electrical tape and just kinda pretty this up a bit. This end piece by going around a few times, overlapping like this. Just like that, just to make it look nice. That's what we want. The last part of this whip, before it's ready to crack, we're going to need a cracker. And I've taken one strand of paracord gut, and I've doubled it in half, and I'm going to stick this part into the vise, and in the loop, I'm going to put a pencil. And now, I'm going to take this pencil and I'm going to spin it very quickly with one finger here. If you've ever done model airplanes, uh, the wind-up propeller ones, you'll be really good at this. So we're going to wind this up. What you're going to do is count to about 30. Then, after you see that it's twisted fairly well, not too much, you're going to take it like this, find the middle, and hold it here, let go. That's how you make a cracker, you can kind of pull it out like that, slip the pencil out, now you're going to tie a knot like that, and this is what you should be, oh, this is what you should be left with. This is your cracker. And we're going to cut off the end here. And here's your cracker. Now we're going to attach it. So I have the end of the fall here in a vise. We're going to take this. This is the Part of the cracker, you're going to just undo it like this and find just kind of open up an eye. You're going to slip it right over the end of our fall, like that. Now we're going to take this part, form a loop around the back. And there are many ways to tie on a cracker, this is what I always do, and pull that very, very tight. Very tight, tight as you can get it. You're not going to break this stuff, don't worry. And I like to give it one more just so it doesn't come off. Just to be sure. Give it another pull through, just like that. Alright guys, our bull whip is complete. Let's take it out and test it. All right, well this will be the first crack ever of this whip. Let's see how she goes. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope uh, hope that you learned a lot from it. And uh, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope that you will be uh, excited about getting into whips now. Thank you for watching.